Mike Burns from the Mopco Improv Theater. A lot of places, including the Mopco, uh, teach improv, uh, focusing on four kind of main tenets of improv, especially with beginning students. And they are make your partner look good. This is really critically important. Um, it's a collaborative art form. And if my partner and I are each trying to make the other one look good, then we're probably going to look great. If we start to compete or go for the cheap laugh, then, hey, I can get a, I can get a laugh at your expense. But how's it going to feel? And how's the audience going to react after that? Right? Um, two is to blurt. We really work on helping students get to the, the get the ability to blurt out the honest reaction in this moment to whatever is going on. We all have that sensor and we try to turn the volume down on that sensor in our head uh, so that the good stuff can come out, the spontaneous blurt. Three, listen. Improv is about receiving and responding. It's, an, it's not about making things up up here and broadcasting. Uh, it's 90% reception, 10% broadcast, I tell students. And finally, that famous two-word phrase, yes and. People who don't really know improv will say to me, oh, that means you always agree, right? No. It means that whatever the offer is in this moment is what I have to build with with my partner. Whatever just happened, happened, and the audience saw it. The audience heard it, and they're with us. So we need to build with whatever it is. That's yes and. Okay, so students will get this for a while. They'll work on it. They'll work on it some more, and then a student will come up to me and say, hey, uh, nothing against these guys, you know, but uh, I think I'm ready for some of the advanced work. And I was wondering, uh, you know, uh, are you going to be putting together, uh, you know, a group of like advanced uh, students, because, um, you know, and we're a small theater, uh, we don't have 18 levels of improv study. Um, but even if we did, nah, we wouldn't. What I tell somebody in this situation is, uh, look, if you are working on these four things diligently, you're doing the advanced work, that is the advanced work. And I see often this look of, uh, disappointment or I get some blowback, some pushback. Uh, no, yeah, I get it. Okay, fine. But if if I were with some better improvisers, if I, if I were with some better improvisers, I could look really good out there. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm, and I say, yeah, of course. Of course. If you were with some really advanced improvisers, they would be doing the work of these four tenets. And of course you'd look better. It's a tough one. Uh, beginning students often sort of focus on the idea, on the uh, story they think the scene should tell, on the joke or the, or the game that they think is there. And they often come up with that in the first second of the scene and want to make their partner do that, which, of course, we call driving. But there is there is advanced improv, and I need to alter, I think, the answer that I give to uh, to that kind of comment from a student. Uh, so I'm going to try it out with you now. Um, if you really diligently apply these four tenets to your work and master them, become a master of these four things, then you're ready to look with your partner for that delightful thing that you know is going to be the game of the scene or tell the story of the scene, supply the arc. Um, and then you and your partner can focus in on that and start to have some great ideas and execute them for the rest of the scene. Then the ideas can matter. Let's take a look at a scene that I did a couple of weeks ago with the great Sam Gorenstein. Not because I did it, but because Sam did it. He, well, you'll see. Let's watch. I oh, there you are. Oh, I had to see for myself the uh, the leak you were talking about. Bad, huh? Uh, I'm not sure it's safe for us to stay in this office building, honestly. What? what? James. James, you saw it yourself, right? The, the basement's flooding. 
Well, that's the basement that's way down at the bottom of the building. Right. The leak yeah. is on the second floor. The basement is below that. But eventually the water right. will rise to the first floor. And then to the second floor. Water goes down. So there it is. Water goes down. Sam's delighted and so am I. It was a blurt. <laughs> if water didn't go down, it wouldn't be a leak. It'd just be a hole. <laughs> James, have you ever seen the ocean? <laughs> and Sam's found the game. Convinced the idiot that he really is in danger. Where does that water go, James? <laughs> That's salt water. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, I've never seen a lake do anything but lie there. <laughs> you say they get fresh? <laughs> James, for the sake of argument, assume that I am correct about water. <laughs> and that floods are a thing that do and can happen. If enough water goes down, then it runs out of space to go. And once that happens, it starts to come up. Get out of town! Well, we should, or at least this building, just this building. I work here. James. This is my job. James, it's my job too. It's our job, James. <laughs> I enter data here. If I leave, who's gonna enter the data? You know, I take my responsibilities very seriously. James, I have no doubt that you are dedicated to your job. This is not, this office building is not up to code, okay? They stuck us all here because they didn't want to pay for a better office building. Everyone else in the building has evacuated. You are the only holdouts. <laughs> if I could code, I would make much more money. Yeah, flopped, but you got to put them out there. Okay, I, I didn't fully understand that, but I heard the word building in there. I did too. And I'm going to assume that that voice was agreeing with me? Okay. Sure. my side oh, of this. Sure. Assume the voice is agreeing with you. Do you think it was a? Do you think the voice just called? It over might be saying the water goes down in the building. <laughs> you don't know. Hold on. Neither one of us heard it clearly. Look, let me try this, okay? Because I think you and all these other people are seriously deluded, and perhaps I can put your mind at ease. Have you ever taken a shower? Yeah, yes, James, I've taken a shower. Where does the water start? Up. And where does it go? Down. Uh, <laughs> okay. Time out. Counter argument. Have you ever taken a bath? Yes. Where does the water start? Down the drain. It goes down the drain. It starts in the faucet. You interrupt it for a little while and then it goes down the no. drain. No. Before it goes down the drain, where does it go, James? I can't mention that. <laughs> Before you get into the tub, where does the water go? Into the tub. What does the tub do, James? When you pour a glass of water into a glass... It doesn't do anything! It's a tub! It just sits there. When you pour a glass of water into a glass, where does the water go, James? Into my mouth! <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes through me, and then, by the way, it goes down. <laughs> you think I'm foolish, but I know these basic rules of physics. James, have you ever seen a geyser? Uh-oh, he really had me, because what do I do with that? Yes. Where have you seen a geyser, James? I went to Yellowstone once. And what did the water do? Traumatized me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was hot, it smelled like sulfur. There were all these people from Wisconsin and New Jersey and all sorts of other places and my parents wouldn't let me buy a buffalo from the gift shop and it was very difficult. 
James? Yes? Listen to me. Okay. The drainage in this building is terrible, but they weatherproofed all the doors, so it's gonna just fill up like a... like a... like a glass, James! Which is what glasses do, and tubs! You think that voice was on your side, James? Because it didn't sound like it was on your side. It sounded like my mother when we went to Yellowstone. <laughs> it was a sneaky voice. James, okay? You can back up the data on the cloud. Well, yeah, I could put it on my thumb drive. <laughs> that actually, the... Oh, that is incredible. Yeah. That is technology right there. Yeah. Pretty cool. James, please. What? If you're in here, when the water rises, you are going to drown on the second floor of the worst designed office building in the world. <laughs> Did the carpet guys come? Look at this. Oh no. It's squishy. Yeah. That's the darnest thing I ever saw. I'm a little closer to the edge, James. I want to get a nice photograph. How was that clear? That was my book. <laughs> but she's dead. They say that when you're about to die, you start to hear and see all the people from your life. But she's from your life! <laughs> and I'm in yours. James? Yes? We can go out the window. It's not that far. And there's a, there's a, there's a little awning. I've seen cartoons and, and you bounce and all the stuff with the... If you're telling me if what you're saying is true, then the water would be just about up to, almost up to this floor. It is up to this floor, well, James. I'm gonna go over to the window. Okay. Yeah, inside and I'm the building. Open the curtain and I'm gonna look out and it is dry as a bone. Outside it's dry, James! <laughs> what? Of course, that's what I'm saying. So we're in agreement, so there is nothing to worry about. <laughs> James, we're inside! I know that! Where the water is! Why are you doing this to me, James? Uh, I'm just here to take care of that carpeting issue. This is a little signal from Walt Patiki that we need to find an ending. It's been now good, but time to go. That is dedication to a job. That is, that is dedication to a job. You're saying we should leave now. And that's a cue okay. from me to Sam, just to confirm. It's not too late. We can kind of like either climb out the window or take our chances underwater. Long way down. It's your choice, James. The window or the water? I don't swim. Window it is. All right. Nope. OK, water it is. I told you you should have paid attention to those swimming lessons. I hate you, Mom. I got it, you I hate the people I know from my life. I really hate you. Listen carefully. And both Sam and I have cued an offstage voice. Buffalo, what are you doing in the building? Get out already. Oh, thank you. That's gratifying. We should go. Okay, hold your breath. Poor fool. <laughs> Back to work. It's often important to show the change in a character, but sometimes you want the character to be just as stubborn as he was at the beginning. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in improv classes and you live in the 518 area, check us out, mopco.org.